All right, so we're going to work another example of the unilateral Z transform to solve a difference equation. So I call this another difference equation, not horribly descriptive, but this is the second one that we're going to work in this video series. So the UZT, the unilateral Z transform, we are going to solve this difference equation right here. The difference equation is y of k plus 2 plus 2y of k plus 1. Well, you can read the whole thing right there. So that's the difference equation that describes this discrete time linear system. And we're going to solve it for all positive time k greater than or equal to 0 given the following initial conditions. At time minus 1, the output y is equal to a half. At time minus 2, it's equal to 1. And then this is going to be solved for the specific input of 2 to the minus k u of k. So this input is applied at time 0. And then as time gets large, this signal decays to the right. So as my first step in solving this using the UZT, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the difference equation in terms of delays. So we're going to write it in the delay operator form. So if I replace every k up here with k minus 2, I can transform the difference equation into this form right here. So just subtract off 2 from each k that you see. And here is the delay operator form. And this is the way I like to work because I think of the UZT uh, properties and time shifts in terms of delays like this. I'm going to go ahead and call this equation 1. And what we're going to do now is use the UZT and go into the Z domain with each one of these terms. And to do that, we have to use what we call the right shift property of the UZT. So the first one's pretty easy. y of k just goes into the z domain as y of z. That's a very easy one. Now is where we start using the right shift property. y of k minus 1, when we go into the z domain, is 1 over z y of z plus y of minus 1. So that initial condition we can see is going to start getting folded in. And we're going to keep doing this for the rest of these terms in equation 1. And then we'll come back and plug in each of these terms into equation 1. And then we'll have transformed equation 1 into the z domain. For now, if I go ahead and simplify this, this initial condition was actually equal to a half. So I'll go ahead and plug that in right there. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. I'm going to rewrite our equation 1 at the top here just so we kind of have that for reference so we can see where we're working. The uh, next term to work on is y of k minus 2. Again, if we use our right shift property that we detailed in the charts previously, this is what we get for y of k minus 2. And then specifically for this problem, I can go ahead and plug in the particular initial conditions that we were provided. For instance, y at time minus 2 was equal to 1. All right, so we've taken the left side of the equation into the z domain. Let's go ahead and get the uh, right side as well, which deals with the input signal 2 to the minus k u of k. So I need to know what that is in the z domain. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that using properties of exponents to get it into the form that I like. 2 to the minus 1 is a half. So really our input is just 1 half to the k u of k. And that's pretty easy to take into the z domain. That's something we do all the time. That is z over z minus 0.5. So I now know what x of z is in the z domain. I need to go ahead and take these terms on the right side of my difference equation into the z domain as well. So again, we'll use the right shift property on each one of these. And now I know what x of k is, so I can actually replace k equals negative 1. That's really easy. That's just 0. Remember, the input had a unit step on it. So for all values of k less than 0, the input was 0. So this simplifies to just that. When I multiply the 1 over z times this, the z on the numerator and the z on the denominator canceled. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the next term in my difference equation. There's just the basic property of the uh, right shift property of the uzt. Again, these are going to go to 0 because my input for this particular problem was 0 for k less than 0. And then again, this is simplifies for this particular value of x of z. Plug it in and we get this. All right, so now I know what every term in equation 1 is in the z domain. Let's go ahead and plug all of those into the equation. So I get y of z plus 2 times the quantity from the previous chart minus 8 times the quantity we had on the previous chart equals 2 times this quantity um, right here and then plus 3 times this quantity 
right here. So at this point, we have gone into the Z domain. The rest of this video now is really just a lot of algebra. We need to do a lot of uh, symbolic manipulation and rearrange things to solve for what we're looking for. So we'll go through this a little quick. You can pause as needed to make sure that the algebra looks good, but it's really just kind of high school algebra. First, let's collect all of the uh, Y of Z's here on the left. There's a Y of Z, a Y of Z, and a lot of Y of Z terms. I can collect like terms and put all of the factors into parentheses and then leave all the kind of non Y of Z terms here. And then on the right side, I can go ahead and get a common denominator. So I got a common denominator and simplified that. So nothing too profound there. Let's go ahead and rewrite where we left off so we have that for reference. I went ahead and simplified this term as well, combine some like terms. And then what are we gonna do next? Let's go ahead and move this term. I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and move Let's go ahead and move that second term over to the right. So instead of a negative seven uh, minus four Z, we move that to the right and it becomes plus four over Z plus seven. So we'll just move that to the right and then continuing to simplify the right-hand sign, just getting common denominators. So we can turn it into one big fraction. We get this. Again, if you wanna go through the details, you can pause and go through that, but it's just getting um, common denominator. So pretty straightforward stuff. And then I'm going to just take care of the numerator, multiply everything out, combine all my like terms to get it written in terms of a polynomial in Z. And then let's go ahead and multiply both sides by Z squared. That's the way I approached it, kind of take care of some of these fractions over here if I do that. On the left, I now have Z squared plus 2Z minus 8. And then on the right, I get some cancellation because there was a Z here, but I end up with this. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by Z. There was a Z over here, so that pops over here. And I end up with this. And I also moved this to the uh, right side as well by dividing both sides of my equation by that. All right, so nothing profound here, just a lot of algebra. But now we're getting very close to being able to do something interesting. Well, one thing I can do is let's go ahead and factor that denominator. That actually factors nicely into Z minus two and Z plus four, so it factors nicely. And now I'm at the point finally where I can do partial fraction expansion. So I'm going to decompose this into A over the first term, or A over Z minus 0 0.5, plus B over Z minus 2, plus C over Z plus 4. And on this next chart, we can go ahead and do the partial fraction expansion, which we've done many times in previous videos. So again, I'm going to go through this a little fast. If you don't know how to do PFE, go back and watch some of the videos about PFE. At this point, I'm going to assume you're pretty good at that by now, and we're going to go through it pretty quickly. Basically, just evaluate both sides of this equation at z equals 0.5. That will let us compute what the value of a is, because the denominator here is z minus 0.5, so we know how to do that. And if I plug z equals 0.5 into my calculator, I get this. And same thing for b. To get the value for b, evaluate both sides of the equation at z equals 2. So I have to evaluate that side of the equation at z equals 2 to give me this fraction right here. And then the same thing for z, c, uh, evaluate both sides at z equals a negative 4 to get this. So I went through that really fast. I have whole, you know, 10 minute videos explaining how to do that, but I'm assuming we're pretty good at that by now. Now that I have the partial fraction expansion, now we're looking really good. I now have y of z divided by z decomposed into the following sum of terms, all which are first order simple terms. And now I can go back into the time domain, just put the z over here, multiply both sides by z, and I have a whole bunch of first order terms that I can do table lookup for. So this first one is a minus 16 over 27th, 0.5 to the k u of k, because there's a minus 0.5 there. And this next term is 34 over 9, 2 to the k u of k, because of the root at z equals 2. And then finally, the constant comes through, and then there's a pole at negative 4, that, so that turns into negative 4 to the k u of k. So that is my final answer. I have solved this difference equation for the specific initial conditions given and for the specific input we were provided. I went ahead and plotted this, so there's what that equation looks like as a function of k. And I also coded it up in MATLAB, so I actually wrote down the difference equation in MATLAB, then used a for loop. That's what I mean by um, that 4 right there. And I iteratively solved it numerically in MATLAB. 
And obviously my equation and the MATLAB should match up, and they do. I've plotted both those here. You can only see the red dots because the blue dots are directly behind the red dots. So if you want the MATLAB for that, head over to my website. You can get the MATLAB code for that downloaded if you're interested in how to solve this numerically in MATLAB as well. So that is it for now. Thanks for watching. We have done yet another example of using the unilateral Z transform to solve a difference equation given initial conditions and some input. Thanks for watching.